breaking the wall of coral reef protection from space. Marcel Kempers, Falling Walls Lab, Groningen. Hi there, my name is Marcel Kempers and I'm from the Delft University of Technology and Reef Support. I understand I'm the last person presenting here, but I hope your energy is still way up, because this is a really important issue that perhaps not many people are aware of here in this room. So how many of you uh, have interacted with coral reefs before? About half the room? Well, the answer is actually everyone has, and let me explain why. So coral reefs only cover 1% of the ocean's surface, but it supports over 25% of our marine life. So everything on the food chain from the oceans have interacted with coral reefs at some point in their lives. It also supports over 1 billion people in coastal protection, food and tourism income. It's also a really vital source of our medicines, uh, cancer treatment, leukemia, arthritis, viruses. On May 1st, the compounds from sea sponges has just been tested for COVID-19 treatments. Uh, when my team was diving back in Bali in 2014, the reefs were a magical place, but three years on, it's an underwater war zone. Um, I just arrived from Cape Town, South Africa. We have the Indian Oceans and the Atlantic uh, corals, and it's the same story. Um, so why is this happening? It's because oceans absorb 90% of the uh, surface heat of the planet, and when Zeus and Kaylee, the algae that lives on the corals, uh, gets too hot, uh, it leaves the corals bare to be bleached by the sun. Um, a coral reef also cannot withstand a fishing vessel dredging through its layers, and also when we stamp on reefs, uh, they just die. They're not adapted to that. Uh, coastal development and industrial development, uh, unsustainable agriculture also pollutes the nearby oceans, uh, growing the algae and suffocating the corals. So what my team is working on, um, Marine, part of the Dutch Caribbean, and Crystal Wee in the middle, she's based in Singapore, they survey, they dive and survey coral reefs uh, on a on a regular basis, but this has its own problems in cost, scale, and time to effectively scale up the protection of marine protected areas and coral reefs. So what my team is working on is how we can use satellite data to break the sea land barrier to observe what's happening in the water, but also what's happening on the land uh, with human activities. We can track with satellite data the type of fishing vessels in that local region to really allocate um, resources to stop certain activities. We can also monitor human activity to control really the damage to coastal reefs. Um, in 20, 2017, the first coral bleaching was detected from space from the Sentinel 2 mission from ESA. That's really what we're using. All this in combination with AI tools that we are building at Reef Support to classify and detect species and to look at the complexity of coral reefs. Uh, it's a really, really complex type of investigation goes into an open map where we can precisely look at which locations around the world uh, are at risk, bleaching, recovery, so that we can allocate really precisely the conservationists and the local authorities to make policies to protect uh, really special areas and so that we can have our coastal ecosystems recover, which they do so very quickly by themselves. And we also uh, advocate for citizen science so that everyone here can really interact with the reefs with data to share information about how we can protect our oceans. Thank you very, very much.